Good morning, everybody. We're going to uh, make hot browns today. Now, hot browns is a Kentucky classic dish, typically found um, especially during derby season um, with the Kentucky Derby and so on. But I got this recipe courtesy of Bobby Flay. And for all of you foodies out there, I'm sure you know who Bobby Flay is, like I do. Um, now, Bobby Flay took the classic Kentucky brown dish and kicked it up a notch by doing a few different things. But what I wanted to do was show you Bobby Flay's recipe and uh, how to put it together and the difficulty involved in it. Um, it's not overly difficult to make, however, it does require some skill and some knowledge in terms of the culinary world. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get our turkey breast um, roasting in the oven. And we're going to get it roasting at 425 for about 15 minutes. And then we are going to cut the temperature back down to 350 um, so that it doesn't dry the meat out. Um, first thing we're going to do though is we're going to rub it down with some butter and some salt and pepper. Um, the butter again is going to help it brown. It will also uh, help keep it moist. Now you can either take the skin off of your turkey breast or leave it on. Personally, I would say leave it on just because of the fact that it does add flavor um, and it does help keep the meat moist. Um, and once we get done roasting this, we'll trim off the skin, we'll trim off the, the excess fat, and so on. So now that we've got that covered, let me wash my hands here. When you're handling different food products, it's really important to make sure that your hands are clean. Um, especially, for example, we're going from turkey today to cheeses and flours and so on, and even pork uh, for the bacon for this dish. Um, you really want to make sure that you clean your hands thoroughly in between, because what can happen if you don't is you'll get what's known as cross-contamination. With poultry, there's a risk of uh, salmonella. Now, years ago, there used to be a risk of um, another foodborne illness with pork. Um, however, with today's technologies and practices that have been put into place, uh, the likelihood of getting sick from pork, um, even medium rare pork, will not cause a problem for you. So we're going to put a little bit of salt on this. Now I always use kosher salt just because I like the way that it brings out the flavors and things. And you don't necessarily have to get it 110% perfect because there again, it is going to um, allow the meat to absorb more flavor. Fresh ground pepper tends to work the best. It has the best flavor. And you can buy grinders like this at just about any of your local markets. <clears throat> and just put a nice good little coating on it. All right. When you put it in the oven, you're going to put it in at uh, 425 degrees for 15 minutes. The 425 degrees for 15 minutes is basically to allow everything to get up to a reasonable temperature relatively quickly um, and give it a good browning start. All right. Now I also wash my meats with just pure water um, before I ever process them or, or season them or get them ready to eat um, or even cook them. The reason I do that is because, for me, I don't want all that excess blood and juice hanging around. So I will rinse it with water um, and cold water at that so that it doesn't have all that excess junk in there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the oven. And we're going to let it roast for 15 minutes. Timer here. Bam, we're done. All right. The other thing we're going to do now too. Um, this is, like I said, a multitasking project, and it is an intermediate recipe in terms of skill level. Um, 
So one of the other things that we need to do is we also need to get our cheese sauce put together, which you can see I have all the ingredients measured out for our cheese sauce. <clears throat> we also have, need to cook our bacon. Now you can wait to cook your bacon until everything is done, or you can do like we're going to do, and we're going to go on ahead and pre-cook this bacon right now um, so that um, it's done, it's out of the way, it's had a good chance to drain off most of the grease. Um, and furthermore, instead of using butter for my fat when it comes to my roux, I'm going to actually use the bacon grease instead. But the recipe did call for two tablespoons of butter for your roux. Now, for those of you that don't know what a roux is, a roux is essentially a thickening agent, agent um, and it helps uh, make things thicker. <laughs> So what we're going to do is I'm going to fry up this bacon. I'm going to render the, the bacon grease, and I'm going to replace it with two tablespoons of bacon grease as opposed to butter. But I wanted to show you that it doesn't matter what type of fat you're using for a root. You can use bacon grease. You can use butter. You can use oil. You can use any number of fats that are out there, even if it's just animal fat. Um, so let's go on ahead and get this on the skillet here. Now me, I don't like my bacon overly crispy. However, my fiance does, or my better half does. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it on about a medium heat so that it cooks relatively slow um, and cooks through and gets a little bit of a crisp to it, but not a huge amount. Um, and again, this is one of those processes where I'm sure everyone has their own way of liking their bacon and how they like it cooked and so on. And this is actually only a half a pound of bacon. Um, so now that we've got that on, we'll come back to that in a few minutes. I am going to go on ahead and uh, leave you guys for just a few minutes while we get this bacon cooked. Once the bacon's cooked and I start rendering the fat to use um, for the roux, we'll come back and I'll show you exactly how to clean your fat from the bacon because we don't want those little black crisps and chunks in it or any of that stuff. So what we'll do is we'll come back, I'll show you how to do that, and we'll start putting this uh, sauce together for the uh, Kentucky Hot Brown. Alright, so we're back. The bacon is cooked. As you can see, it's got a nice golden brown color to it, um, and it really does reduce quite a bit in terms of content. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this bacon grease that accumulated in here in the pan and we're going to save it and we're going to use that for our fat for the uh, roux that we're going to make for our cheese sauce. Now, I personally uh, don't have a chinois which is a finer grade uh, strainer and I do find that this method works relatively easily and effectively. What you're going to do is you're just going to take your standard strainer, you're going to place a um, paper towel in it, and you're going to dump it into the paper towel, and it will drain, as you can see. Now all we're looking to really keep here is two tablespoons, which I believe we've probably got a little bit more than that. And if you look in here in the paper towel, you'll see all those brown crispies and stuff that I was talking to you about that we don't want. Alright. We've got that ready now. If you had a higher bowl or you wanted to, you could even allow it to drain more and re retain even more of the bacon fat. However, for what we're doing with it, we don't need to retain any more than what we've got. So then we've got our measuring spoon here, and we're going to use two tablespoons of bacon fat as opposed to the two tablespoons of butter. We're going to place it into our, our pan that we're going to make our uh, bechamel with, or roux with. All right. We'll do just a little extra just because those last two were not completely full. Alright, so now that we've got that in there, we're going to heat this back up. Alright, and once it gets hot and starts bubbling, we're going to add our flour to it to make our roux. And you're going to 
cook it for about one minute. And when you're adding your flour to your fat, you want to make sure that you continuously stir it because it will burn. And you're going to get this uh, nutty smell from the flour as it's cooking. Um, and we're looking for more of a white, light brown roux as opposed to a gold roux or a dark brown roux, which would typically be used for brown gravies. Um, and given the fact that that oil is still relatively hot, um, I'm going to go on ahead and start working with this. And it shouldn't take too much. And you want to add it relatively slow. And you want to keep mixing it in. And as you can see, it's taking on kind of a creamy color already. And that's just from the fat and the flour. And it will thicken up. And I've actually got to change utensils here because this pan's a little bit bigger than what I intended on. So we're going to set this off the side here. There we go. See, now we can get it all mixed in there a lot better. And you see these little chunks that are in here? That's fine. They will dissipate in the fat as it heats up, as it cooks. Now what the bacon fat's going to do for it, Instead of using the butter, um, what the bacon fat's going to end up doing is just adding more flavor um, to the cheese sauce instead of using butter. So, and it's all, like I said earlier, it's just personal preference, whatever it is that you decide you'd rather do, you could do. Alright, you see how it's bubbling there? Um, I don't have a nutty smell as of yet. So we're just going to keep cooking it down, cooking it down. And once this sauce, or once this roux rather, is cooked down the way it needs to be, we will um, add our milk to it. We're going to bring that milk to a boil. And then when it, once it starts boiling, you will know how thick your sauce or gravy or whatever it is that you're making a roux for is going to be. Um, because that's the thickest that it will get is when it's boiling. So we're going to keep working this here for just a little bit longer. Right. And remember too, like I said before, you always want to keep moving it around because you don't want it to burn and it will burn relatively quickly. And I am starting to get that nutty smell from the flour now. It's too bad we don't have smell-o-vision because I would let you smell it yourselves. <laughs> and as you can see, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. It's taking longer for it to get back to the pan, which is exactly what we're looking for. And you can see the colors becoming a little more yellow, which is a good color for what we're doing. actually need a little bit more flour, I believe. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit more. So let me get a little bit more flour here real quick. See how that's starting to darken up? And actually, almost starting to burn. But you can smell that strong woodsy butternut smell. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this over here so we can get the heat off of it. Keep stirring it. Yeah. 
residual heat. Most of the time when you're making a roux, a recipe will call for a roux and it's typically um, equal parts of fat and flour. Okay, now you see how it's thickening up there? That's what we're looking for. It's got that nice golden brown color. about here is where we want it. You can see it's a nice thick kind of creamy sauce. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that back on there, grab our milk, and pour your milk right into it. You hear that sizzling, that's a good thing. Alright, so we're going to continue to heat this up just as we are. Alright, and you're going to mix it in. And now that we have enough liquid in our pan, we can actually do away with this spoon once it gets hot. Because I don't want to lose all this roux that's on the spoon. And it is stuck on the spoon. So what we'll do is we'll just continue heating it up, which will take about five minutes or so, um, depending on how cold your liquid is and so on. And whenever you're making a roux, you want to make sure that your roux it's either hot and your liquid is cold, or that your roux is cold and your liquid is hot. Um, if you try adding hot and hot, it's not going to mix, it's not going to marry, and it's just not going to work out. So, let me get this put together here, and when we're ready for the next step, I'll come back to you guys and show you where we go from here.